Srivastav Ji, Senior Deputy Director General, National Telecommunications Institute for Policy Research, Innovation and Training. As head of NTR PRIT, he has been instrumental in raising the institute further with cross-sectoral collaboration. Sir has also worked as principal advisor in Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, looking after telecom networks, spectrum, and licensing issues. Sir was also deputy to the International Telecom Union to serve in Iraq and at ITU headquarters in Geneva. He has been associated with various standard developments activities of ITU in telecommunication standardization sector and radio communication sector. I, Dr. Deepika Bunch, on behalf of J.C. Bose University of Science and Technology, YMC Faridabad, once again extended, extend a very warm welcome to Shri U.K. Shivastav Ji for his gracious presence. Now, I request Sir to kindly address the audience. Sir, please. Thank you very much, Dr. Poonj. Uh, a very good morning to all of you. Thank you again for this nice introduction. Uh, Professor Dinesh Kumar, Vice Chancellor, Jesse Bose University of Science and Technology. Lieutenant General S.C. Kocher, DGCOI, who has to do a uh, lot of hard work for introduction of this new technology in this country. Dr. S.K. Gurg, Registrar, distinguished uh, guests, faculty members, participants, and my dear students. Uh, I'm not going to talk so much about technology, though I have keen interest in this technology, but I will leave this to uh, two of my uh, lieutenants who will be speaking um, in this program, Mr. Bhardwaj and also Mr. Ashok Kumar. But all the same, it's my pleasure to be part of this one-day webinar on 5G technology, Bridge to Future, uh, jointly organized by J.C. Bose University of Science and Technology uh, and uh, organization that I had, NTI Pred. Uh, I am told that this uh, university has a long history. It was uh, explained in a lot of detail. And I also noted that it was established in 1969. And today, um, I think nine colleges are affiliated with this university offering a variety of courses. So I'm sure a lot of students must be attending this program and taking interest in this very sophisticated development of 5G technology. Let me congratulate the vice chancellor and the entire team of university for creating such a huge educational institution for the benefit of society at large. As uh, you all be knowing that 5G is the fifth generation mobile network and it's a new global wireless standard as uh, General Kocher was mentioning. It's an entirely new platform, entirely new technology. Although during this program, you'll be hearing about 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G and progression to 5G. But as General Kocher said 5G is an entirely new domain, new technology, new standard. And one of the key aspects of 5G is that it enables new kind of network that is designed to connect virtually everyone and everything together, including machines, objects, and devices. So very complicated technology, and it is going to be going to benefit society to a very great extent. The 5G wireless technology is meant to deliver higher multi gigabit per second peak data speed, ultra low latency, more reliability, massive network capacity, increased availability, and more informed user experience to more users. As you know, Kocher was saying, a lot of users can simultaneously hook on to the network. As an illustration with 5G uh, reaching 10 gigabits per second kind of speed, up to 100 times faster than 4G, the 5G can, can deliver the level of performance needed for an increasingly connected society. The result, the result is, that just as an example, that downloading a high-definition film over a 4G network, for example, takes 50 minutes on average. On 5G, it can be done in just nine minutes flat. So this higher performance and improved efficiency empower new user experiences and connect new industries. I'm sure 
there will be some talk about industry 4.0. I will not go into those details. But there's one issue that is not highlighted always is that the 5G technology is very much a green technology. It consumes very little power and uh, it promotes, you know, kind of uh, green technology as compared to previous standards and technologies. So, friends, as we are all aware today, everything is turning digital from cars to cities to services to machines. The digital economy is simply becoming the economy and 5G will become the future network infrastructure accordingly. Everybody and everything will use 5G anywhere at any time, always connected with almost zero delay and a perceived limitless capacities. Uh, the digitalization of our economy and society is accelerating, all of you know, and it is unstoppable. With the Internet of Things, we see a new era of connectivity where billions of devices exchange data and instill intelligence in our everyday life, from watches to shoes, from fridges to heating, from hospitals to factories, any industry will need to adjust to this new reality. 5G is expected to be connectivity infrastructure that will foster this industrial and societal transformation. The deployment of 5G is taking momentum across the world, and as per the recent estimate, uh, which was published in uh, Ericsson Mobility Report of June 21, last month only, the customer base of 5G will surpass half a billion this year itself in the world. Uh, we are likely to have uh, 5G networks in uh, being rolled out in our country by middle of next year, as uh, you know, Kocher was mentioning. Uh, the Department of Telecom has set up a test bed at a cost of uh, 224 crore rupees at IIT Madras. India has started trial of 5G services and it is likely that operators will start deploying these uh, networks uh, you know, by middle of next year on existing spectrum itself and consolidate after government auctions more spectrum in mid and uh, millimeter wave bands. The government has set up a portal for getting experimental the spectrum at a very low cost. This is all being done to encourage the industry and academia to participate in the technology development processes. The government initiatives are bearing fruits also. A number of institutions are deploying various algorithms for the uh, 5G technologies and developing them. You must have recently read that IT Hyderabad and a company called VSIG, uh, they have developed an uh, narrowband IoT system on chip for 5G, which is called Koala. A number of companies are working on Orion technology to beat our northern neighbor, uh, which till recently boasted of having technology monopoly. And uh, I am highlighting all this to encourage the students here to, to participate in this fast development process and earn good name for themselves and also for the country. Uh, I hope this webinar will become a starting point for the university and uh, much more such programs will be organized by it for the benefit of faculty and students. Uh, I wish all the success in the endeavor of this university. We at NTI Pret will continue to support you in the area uh, we are having expertise in. Uh, I would also say that uh, Bhardwaj, Anil Bhardwaj should cover EMF in more detail so that whatever fears that are there in people's mind, it should be allayed. And uh, each one of the students and uh, staff member, faculty member present here should become, uh, you know, envoy for promoting uh, RF technologies and uh, allaying fear of people um, as far as EMF radiation is concerned. And also you should talk about the Taran Sanchar portal and uh, uh, people should have feel of what this portal is about and they should feel at, at rest, at peace, that EMF, there is no no threat at all. So with these words, I extend my best wishes for the successful completion of this program. Uh, thank you all very much. Uh, thanks to the Vice Chancellor and faculty members for inviting me to, uh, to this very important uh, seminar, webinar. Thank you very much. Stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you, sir. Thank you, Siddhartha. Thank you very much.